Mr. Speaker, I rise to provide Parliament and the people of St. Lucia two statements on the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports activities and plans as we seek to not just join in the fight, but continue to do our best in communities to deal with the scourge of crime. And so, Mr. Speaker, first statement will be on carry the Commonwealth Heads of Government Declaration of the year 2023 as the year of youth. Mr. Speaker, the year 1985 is iconic in the, historic, in the history of youth development in St. Lucia. It was in that year the United Nations declared as the International Year of Youth. It was under this declaration that the National Youth Council, NYC, was founded on the 14th of April, 1985, led by then youth activist, Honorable Justice Mario Michel. Mr. Speaker, the NYC was incorporated through an act of parliament in 1997 with the mission to harness the talent, energy, and creativity of St. Lucian youth and transform these into a potent resource for individual, community, and national transformation. M Minister, the... just hold a minute. I'm getting a, a... Is the speaker... Yes. Not me, the one inside there, on? Yes, I was saying myself twice. Which is not always a bad thing, but... <laughs> okay, proceed, Minister. Mr. Speaker, at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting held in Kigali, Rwanda, in June 2022, Heads of Government sealed their commitment to ensure the Commonwealth's attention is firmly fixed on the empowerment of young people through a declaration that 2023 will be the year of the youth. Young people represent more than 60% of the Commonwealth's 2.6 billion people. The 2023 declaration comes on the heels of the devastating global pandemic that released a tsunami of health, education, economic, social, employment, and safeguarding challenges, and aims to get youth development on track for global gear development goal deadlines. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports has taken the lead to prepare for the commemorating of the Year of the Youth 2023. The lead committee comprises officers of the Youth Division, along with the National Youth Council, once the new executive is fully activated. Mr. Speaker, the lead committee noted the surge in crime and gun violence in the country. Therefore, the emphasis for the Year of the Youth will be on safety, security and a peaceful coexistence. The theme emanates from one of the pillars of the national youth policy, which aims to empower young people and communities as agents of peaceful and safe national coexistence. Hence, a number of initiatives and activities will provide knowledge, skills and practice that will prevent and reduce crime in communities. While the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports forms the core committee, we are formulating local organizing committees, LOCs, for each constituency with inclusion of the youth worker, the district youth and sports council, the students council, the social transformation officer, and the representative from the police. All LOCs will be community-based and will be responsible for the planning and executing of activities within their jurisdictions. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry is working hard to forge partnerships with national, regional, and international organizations and institutions, including private sector and faith-based organizations for resource mobilization. Our mission is to pursue the goal of safety, security, and peaceful coexistence in communities as young people take center stage to address the issue of crime and violence prevention as we mark the Year of the Youth in 2023. Some of the activities on the calendar include the Peace Campaign Initiative to include TikTok challenges, jingle or song competitions, interdistrict debates, 
district activities in terms of monuments to signal the celebration of the youth, presentation of the National Youth Policy and Action Plan, and the launch of Skilled 758 app, amongst other activities. Mr. Speaker, I take this opportunity to call on all youth and sports organizations, uniform groups, faith-based groups, concerned youth activists, among others, to work together for an enduring initiative which will become a legacy for this declaration of the Year of the Youth. Let's all play our role to bring back peace and safety in our communities. Mr. Speaker, I'll venture into a Parliament's statement on an alternative sports initiative in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, during my campaign, I championed the need for the development of non-traditional sports in St. Lucia. And as part of my platform, I did indicate that if elected, I would ensure that alternative sports programs will be developed in St. Lucia. I continued that faith because I believe there is merit to provide avenues for the involvement of more people who are not inclined to participate in the more established and traditional sports such as football, swimming, basketball, cricket, and the likes. I recall people having no faith in this promise and pronouncement and shrugged it off as just another camping talk that would have not materialized or be followed through. I'm here today elated and beaming with pride because the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports have been able to bring this to fruition. On Friday, December 2nd, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports launched our first ever alternative sports season, which will run from December 10th, 2022, through to February 26th, 2023. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry developed a holistic program geared towards both locals and foreigners, as we believe this can enhance further our tourism product allowing St. Lucia to welcome visitors to its shores for other reasons than just sea and sand and adventures. Additionally, productive linkages can be established with several key sectors, including agriculture, fisheries, and of course, the blue economy. Mr. Speaker, given the importance of this program, an alternative sports officer was recruited in the month of July 2022. This officer's main role was to develop a program reflective of the input of all key stakeholders to ensure its effective execution and implementation. In doing so, Mr. Craig Gustav was charged with the responsibility of formalizing the activities of young people involved in alternative sport on the island. The consultations with alternative sports practitioners throughout the island included horse racing, St. Lucia Darts Association, the St. Lucia Chess Association, the Paintball Club, Association of Assorted Motoring Advancement, the St. Lucia Motor X Club, the East Sports Club, Sound Club, General Automotive Fraternity, to name a few. Mr. Speaker, during this season, we expect to create an atmosphere to, to attract more citizens' involvement, particularly those who need not be inclined to partake in the more physical, traditional sports, such as football and cricket. This is yet another initiative set to be undertaken by the ministry to get more young people off the streets away from a life of crime. Mr. Speaker, the introduction of this program to St. Lucia is not without its challenges. Many of our partners have identified the absence of established and suitable venues for such events. This means that ancillary services such as lighting, portable toilets, and seating will be brought in to any identified venues hosting these events. Notwithstanding this challenge, we have started preparing venues that can be earmarked for these sporting activities. I look forward, Mr. Speaker, to your support and Parliament's support in this new initiative as we explore alternative avenues for the development of our young people. Mr. Speaker, the first event will be a car show with the inclusion of all other motor sports, super motorbikes, etc., to be held in Rodney Bay on a Saturday, this Saturday from 5 p.m. All of Parliament is invited to enjoy the talents the activities of our young people. I thank you.